you know, I, I'm always inspired by uh, Moses, um, the life of Moses. Moses in Exodus 13, 14, and so on, he sees the, he, he sees the Red Sea being parted. And, uh, you know, when his hands are lifted up by Aaron and Hur, he sees that armies being routed. And, and he sees the manna come from heaven. And he's seen all that. And, and he says, he, he tells God, God, if you will not come with us, if your presence will not go with us, do not send us there. And he tells God, God, show me our glory. So God, this is how he introduces himself, you know, Isaiah 43. He says, I am the Lord, your holy one, the creator of Israel, your king. Isaiah 47 verse 4. Isaiah talks about God and he says, as for our redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name, the holy one of Israel. God himself saying, I am the holy one. Now there are many attributes of God. God is good. God is love. He's so full of mercy. And yet we see in the throne room, the worship that happens, it's his holiness that is being declared. Again in Psalm 105 verse 3, glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Glory. And the word used there is halal which means a loud shout, to boast, to rave about. If there's one place that we can boast righteously is when we worship God. So the question is, how do we regard his name? And the Lord is actually, you know, telling um, the, the Israelites, we read in Ezekiel 36, when they came to the nations, wherever they went, they profaned my holy name. So the Lord wants to sanctify his name, and restore that holiness, that greatness that is part of his name. Scripture says that God, in Psalm 60 and verse 6, God has spoken in his holiness. So the very words that proceed out of his mouth, they are holy words. Psalm 93 and verse 5, your testimonies are very sure. Holiness adorns your house, O Lord, forever. Holiness adorns your house. It's like a decoration. In the Old Testament, the Lord instructed Moses uh, to build the tabernacle. He instructs Moses to give holy garments for beauty and for praise. Holy garments. So holiness everywhere. Holiness adorn, adorns that place. When we come to the New Testament, we see that you and I, we are the dwelling place of this holy God. The God who is so holy. The God who is you know, whose nature is holy, the God who is uncontaminated, untouched by sin, who choose to dwell in us. Leviticus 10 and verse 3, by those who come near me, the Lord says, I must be regarded as holy. So we might be in that place saying, if God is so holy, if he's so unapproachable, is he really? But the fact is, this God who is so holy who's so awesome, so pure, so full of love, so full of grace, wants to relate to each one of us. And he makes the first move. And one of the ways in which he makes a way for us to come and approach him is through the atonement. Atonement literally means to cancel something. Now we know that the Lord Jesus is our atonement. He went to the cross he shed his blood to be our atonement. Romans 5 and verse 10 says, For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. You know, with, you don't have to, you can come boldly because this is what Christ did for us. It's not because of our own righteousness, but the righteousness which he put on us because of his blood, the righteousness which he clothes us with, and which is what um, 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 21 says, for he, knew, he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. He made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him.